Okay, general purpose for a piston ring is to seal the ball between the crankcase pressure and the combustion chamber pressure. So basically the rings are there to seal between the piston and the ball so that when you get the combustion it doesn't pop straight down and fire in the block. How many piston rings do we have? Right, on a good quality race piston you will have three rings. Top ring, second ring or control ring. And normally they will come in a packet like so. These are the Amiga Japanese rings, very, very high quality. These are the forged pistons rings. The die cast piston rings come in the same packet, but they're a different ring. So what you have here is easily identifiable top, second and oil control ring. Top one is a solid steel ring. The reason it's steel is it will stand immense pressures from a race engine and heat. You'll notice it's got a little letter N stamped on it just there. We always put the N upwards in the bore, but it is a plain ring, so either way around, it doesn't matter. And that's to keep all the compression inside the Holds combustion chamber. Holds the compression chamber. in the combustion chamber. Okay, second ring is a cast iron ring. This one again has got an N on it, but this is a must fit N upwards because it's a taper-faced ring. The taper-faced ring does two things. Firstly, it acts as a backup for the compression ring. Secondly, the taper face scrapes the oil as well. So, okay. dual acting ring. So if it didn't scrape the oil along with number three, which mm -hmm. we'll come on to in a minute, what would happen? If it didn't scrape the oil, um, not a great deal. I mean, some pistons I have seen have only got one compression ring and they still work, but they do smoke. This second ring stops the smoking. Got it. Even on a race engine in the paddock. So that's that one, okay. Third ring is the multi-piece oil control ring. You've got the oil rail to start with. You have one of those at the top, one at the bottom, and that's the actual scraper itself, which is like a concertina. And what it does is it scrapes the oil off the bore as the piston is coming down. As it scrapes the oil off, it pulls the oil to the back of the piston where you'll see these holes. They're the drain holes. As it's pulling the oil down and back, the oil then transmits to the inside of the piston and then drains back into the sump. Is that for lubrication? Not directly for lubrication. It's literally to scrape the oil off the bores. There's that much oil mist inside the bore when this is going up and down. The lubrication is there anyway. When would you need to change the piston rings? Okay, piston rings changing is really a black art. You only need to change them when they're worn out and when they're worn out you can check by putting the ring in the bore, pushing it down square with the head of the piston and then checking the gap with feeler gauge. Obviously we say 12 thou, you've got to have a plus or minus so if there were 14 thou, 15 thou I would deem that the time to change them. I have seen them 22, 24 thou so it just depends on the application of what they've been used for. Is that gap the same on all the pistons? No, what you'll normally find is you'll work on a three thou per inch of bore and with these being 2.8 inches, almost three inches, three inches times three thou is nine thou, we work on 12 thou on these rings purely and simply because it's a steel top ring and it's got a higher expansion rate. Do you change that for a road car then? I would pull the road car rings down if they're a steel top ring to most probably nine or ten Okay. Purely and simply because these are most probably running up to eight, eight and a half thousand. Road engine, you get three, four thousand majority of the time. So it's never going to generate the amount of heat these will. And the piston installation tool there, how does that work? So if you had the cylinder block here, pop this on the top, you drop your piston in there with the rings on, and this you will see, it's got a little taper on the first three quarters of an inch. And what it does, as you push it down in there, it actually compresses the ring. And it makes it so, so easy to fit the pistons. Instead of the old piston tool with the Allen key on the side, you tighten it up, you break the ring. Hey ho, this, I've never seen anybody break a ring with these. If you check our other videos on YouTube, we've got a short demonstration of how that works. So, 
There you go. Thanks very much, Steve. Okay. A brief overview of our piston rings, all available on the website for all of the pistons that we stock. We keep spares for everything. Okay, and that's for the forgings and the die castings. But please be aware, these piston rings may not fit other types of pistons.